Welcome to the Cambridge Assessment Podcast. I'm Ashley Capaldi and I'm here to introduce a special three-part series guest hosted by Paul Ellis and Melanie Dunn. According to the UN Refugee Agency, there are currently four million refugee children out of school. One of the UN's sustainable development goals is to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. In this first episode, you'll hear from Sol Escobar and Sinead Fitzsimons from our Refugee Support Committee. They arranged a week of events in support of Refugee Week, the UK's largest festival celebrating the contribution of refugees and helping others understand why people seek sanctuary. In the first of our podcasts, we are talking to the two colleagues who are heading up the Cambridge Refugee Support Committee, Sol and Sinead. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Would you like to introduce each of yourself, say who you are and what you what you normally do in this organisation? <laughs> yes. Um, my name is Sol Escobar and I work in the assessment division at Cambridge International in the languages team. And I'm Sinead Fitzsimons and I'm in the research division, specifically on the curriculum development strand. Excellent, thank you. So you're heading up this Cambridge Refugee Support Committee. Can you tell us what it is exactly? Yes, um, so I'm the chair. And And I'm the vice chair. Yes, Um, and um, basically we decided with uh, colleagues from around the organisation to come together to form a a committee that will support uh, refugee aid initiatives, and anything to do with refugee education and support, etc. And we had noticed that there was already a lot of interest and a lot of initiatives going on across um, Cambridge Assessment as well um, at Cambridge University Press, um, supporting various um, refugee initiatives. Um, People were doing things within their job roles. So for example, um, we were working on a few research projects with UNICEF. Um, In addition, people were supporting refugee initiatives in their own time. Um, and and Saul so will speak about yeah that briefly. yeah exactly so um so personally I started volunteering with a charity here in Cambridge who goes to convoys in, to Calais um, but I did find out just by talking to people that there were other colleagues that were doing similar things um, so it turned out by um, all of us sort of communicating in this intranet uh, yammer at, at work um, that we all had this um, shared passion. So we decided to do something about it. So how long has the committee been running now? Well, officially, uh, uh, I would say <laughs> we're just over a month, perhaps about six weeks. Yeah, um, yeah. But it's it's a fine line between when everyone who is working independently on different initiatives and then when the actual committee um, started it 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 kind of all morphed um, together I think probably about six weeks ago we all decided to have a meeting so to meet face to face to talk about what we could do Um, and in this first meeting we had a core of people all of us very uh, passionate about doing something and we all sort of said okay so what can we do let's form a committee so how do we do that and then within a week I would say it all happened really quickly um, we came together again and we decided well refugee week is I think literally in about three weeks after that initial meeting. uh, Why don't we do something to raise awareness during a refugee week? And then we can in that time decide what the committee is going to look like and do a launch. And we always put out calls to people, um, you know, on internal communication portals, etc. about if anyone's interested, please join us. And we were overwhelmed with the amount of support. And that was from mm-hmm. all areas of the organization, from all levels of the organization. So we had so many people coming together. Uh, one of our first meetings, we had 30, 30 people, people showing up on their own time. Um, and then in addition to that, we had quite a few ideas for Refugee Week, and we'll speak about that later. But um, some of those ideas did involve some logistic planning and some financial support, um, as well as some um, AV and tech support, etc. Yeah. And people were just so generous and so willing to give their own time. And I think that was really pivotal in getting this committee off the ground mm. um, because it was an environment that was supportive yeah. of it. We, def- we would have not been able to pull off 
Refugee Week without <laughs> support across the organization from budget to uh, people donating their time, volunteering their time um, and expertise in all of these different areas that we had no idea we were supposed to know about how to put on an, an external uh, talk with external speakers, for example, or um, do a, a poncho sewing session. I didn't know we had sewing machines, for example, on site, that kind of thing. Um, so, yes, a lot of people came together to put this, uh, make this happen in about two and a half, three weeks or so, I'd say. Yeah. And why do you think people got so excited so quickly? I, I think the passion was already there. Um, it was just a matter of corralling that and um, putting that into a very productive and organized, mm. um, targeted yeah. effort. I, yeah. And, um, you know, we're an organization that prides ourselves on supporting others, especially in supporting others with education. And I think it was something that people very easily got behind and managers yeah. were very supportive on allowing people to have time yeah. to put towards this as well. I think as well the fact that we had something tangible like Refugee Week and even though it came together quite quickly we had a plan we decided okay let's start with Refugee Week let's do something every day let's come up with an idea for every day um, and then let's get little teams to to organize all these different things so it wasn't a vague what can we do it was a lot more mm. concrete and so what, people were like yes I know how to do this I'm going to volunteer for that and what were the main activities that you organized during refugee week so we can go through day by day um, so yep. Monday um, we had the official launch of our committee so we had a very um, open meeting it was a bit of a celebration of okay this is the start of refugee week but it was also the start of our formal committee launch yeah. and that was really really positive yeah it was great we had about 20 people outside yeah and then on Tuesday we had I suppose our main event of the week um, which was a panel talk with external speakers so we had four external speakers um, that uh, comprised of refugees, former refugees, um, activists, uh, students from Syria. Um, one speaker was uh, connecting remotely from Belgium as well. And they were all telling their stories and their stories were very different. Uh, it could have been um, one of them was telling his story, his journey from escaping dictatorship in Eritrea and making his way all the way to the UK when he was 13 years old. Um, there was an activist who was also this person's foster brother who told the story about how his life and his family's life changed when he came to live with them and how he turned into a human rights and uh, refugee rights activist. Um, and yes, we had about 50 people that came to, uh, to the talk. It was on Facebook Live. It had about 60,000 views. It was very, very positive. Um, we had a lot of really great feedback from people being very touched um, from hearing first person uh, accounts of what refugees go through and the various reasons why they leave their countries and and the journeys that they have. And that's still available on the Cambridge Assessment Facebook page and that's still open for anyone to watch on that. Yeah. Um, so Tuesday was, was definitely our marquee event. Um, on Wednesday, we had a volunteer fair where um, various um, local charities came and showed our colleagues how they could potentially get involved if they wanted to. Um, on Thursday, we had a um, poncho sewing event. Do you want to speak? Yes. About the um, so we have a local Cambridge charity, the Cambridge Convoy Refugee Action Group, which on top of taking people in convoys down to volunteer in Calais, um, they also um, make these ponchos. They have created, they had this idea of turning relatively cheap blankets, IKEA blankets, into wearable 
blankets or ponchos so that um, police in Calais couldn't take them away because that is something that happens fairly regularly that police just take away blankets or sleeping bags or tents um, and so they have been making these ponchos for quite a while um, and they have uh, devised a pattern and they have events in Cambridge where a lot of people get together for a weekend and make a hundred ponchos and then we take them down to Calais and distribute it mm -hmm. to people there so we had one in-house that was really great. Yeah, and I think what was so special about that event is we partnered with the Sewing Bees, which is another um, Cambridge Assessment employee committee um, that every Thursday or every other Thursday gets together and sews. And they were so engaged and so excited and enthusiastic yeah. to be partnering up with this. Um, and um, in the end, we made about 40 or 50 ponchos. So that was really successful. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. And finally, we did a donation drive on, mm. on Thursday and Friday. So yeah, overall, it was a very busy week, um, but there was a lot of engagement. And yeah, um, it went really to, well. It was it was yeah yeah, and build on it. Yeah, considering yeah. we only put it together in two and a half weeks, <laughs> I think it's yeah, it was very successful. Yeah. What kind of donations did you ask for, and what did you get? So we reached out to the group that Saul has been referring to, um, the. Cambridge yeah, the Cambridge group, group. Um, the um, Cambridge convoy, and mm -hmm. um, they gave us specific things that were needed. Um, so, for example, there was a lot of um, personal yeah. Yeah. You know, toothbrushes and uh, deodorant, and there was also specific things for um, males, um, because in Calais, um, there tends to be adult males that are more in yeah. need. Um, and we appreciated that because we wanted it to be as helpful as possible. Yeah. Um, so they were very specific. and But there were still 50 or 60 items on the list. So we, we ended up having a great haul of donations. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Um, and thankfully, one of our other uh, committee members was able to drop that off on Friday evening. So yeah. it was a real um, group effort. Which yeah, we had great. things as well, like camping gear as well, because that's something that there's quite a shortage of. Um, tents and sleeping bags and um, things like that. Um, and also, yes, um, certain sizes of clothes as well. So there's a, a big group of miners in Calais, male miners. And so mm -hmm. small sizes of mm -hmm. things like jeans or T-shirts were, were quite useful. Um, there's quite a, an effort of sorting donations. There's a big team of volunteers who sort donations down in, in Calais. So what I've learned from going there as well is that the the more specific the donation the better because you get all sorts of things and a lot of it is not really useful um so it was really good that we had that list and people actually just brought what we needed so i'm hearing targeted action is really quite clearly important here you're saying about having certain types of donation doing certain types of thing do you think that the committee would keep within a certain area of, of helping refugees or do you think there's an opportunity to expand the work of what the committee is, is doing now that refugee week is um under our belt i should say um we're looking ahead into okay well what is the space that this committee is really going to hold in this organization um we also know that there is potential to create a really strong network across the university so that's still something that we are brainstorming about and looking at um, it's really important for us that we have impact um, and that it's really targeted help, as you said. It, mm -hmm. It's we, we don't want to help just for the sake of feeling that we're helping. We want to be trying to make a difference, as, as cliche as that sounds. Mm -hmm. um, so we're still looking into that, but a lot of it will come down to the interests of the committee members as well. So finding things that we are passionate about and also things that you know we are skilled at. Yeah. And the committee is still always open to new members. So if anyone wants to reach out to us, um, please feel free to do so. Yeah, I think that it's important that we bring together people from across the organization that have so much expertise in all sorts of areas, be it education or teaching or marketing or uh, communication, social media, etc. And we have such a great team um, and more people keep coming saying that, you know, this is what I have to offer, um, that we are getting ideas all the time of things that we can do based on the expertise that we have in the team as well. But we do kind of want to try to focus on two 
areas, which is one, supporting existing initiatives, be it across the organisation, university or charities, but also potentially, eventually, um, leading our own uh, yeah. project. Most likely related to education since yeah. that is you since know, that our expertise. expertise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and, and we're really hoping to get some more connections with Cambridge assessment uh, colleagues from beyond Cambridge as well. So if there's anyone listening that um, is beyond Cambridge that wants to get involved, please reach out to us because we would very, very welcome that. And we yeah. say beyond Cambridge, Absolutely. you mean our regional offices worldwide. Yeah, international. Yeah, yeah, exactly. um, yeah. So. yeah. So if colleagues would like to find out more um, about the team and would like to get involved, then what should they do? Um, If you are internal uh, to Cambridge Assessment, um, they can find us on our Yammer page, which is our um, social network page. If you are external to Cambridge Assessment, um, you can reach us us, through email which we will be sure to post um beside this podcast Um, we also have an insight page for internal um colleagues as well that explains a bit more what we do and uh, who we are as well so many ways to get in touch and hopefully many more activities coming up in the future as you say you focused on refugee week which is around about the 20th of june because that's a key point in the United Nations calendar indeed to, to support refugees worldwide mm-hmm. but this will be ongoing throughout the year there'll be regular events and are you still planning yeah some absolutely moment? yes that that is a good point mm-hmm. we are planning on having or the organizing other events apart from supporting initiatives etc but mm-hmm. um the talk that we held was so um popular and and very touching for people that we do want to bring more people to come and tell their stories and we would like to give a platform and amplify voices of the those who don't get regularly the opportunity to do so. Um, and I think that that had quite a big impact. So it would be great to continue to to do that. And we will be pushing an event in September, um, which we'll call Tent Fest for now. We won't give yes. further details about it now, but if you're intrigued <laughs> about that exciting name, um, <laughs> yes, then reach and, out to uh, us. And yeah, we'll, a little, we'll... uh, yeah, it's just some details on that. Um, we are going to be partnering with this Cambridge Convoy Refugee Action Group charity um, and supporting them in fixing a lot of tents that were collected from um, from festivals across of the UK. So we're we don't have all of the details yet, but we're going to be doing that in September. If anyone is interested in camping or outdoor equipment uh, <laughs> or fixing tents, do get in touch with us. Well, that sounds fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for, for talking to us about your work so far. We Thanks look for having to us. Yeah, thank what you. happens next. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank, you. You. thank you for listening to the Cambridge Assessment Podcast. You can find more on our website at www cambridgeassessment.org.uk just search for podcast gallery we are also on youtube and itunes leave us a comment wherever you're listening if you'd like to get in touch about any of our refugee support projects and we'll get back to you